Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On The Mic. This is a very, very special, very special in-studio podcast with the one, the only, Hajra Khan. Hajra, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, guys, for having me. It's always of a pleasure. Of course. No, it's our pleasure, absolutely. Honestly. And the On The Mic debut of this guy. By the way, he's never been on camera before. <laughs> really? This is the yeah. first time. <laughs> Wave to the people. Hello. <laughs> this is the guy <laughs> behind. <laughs> and Tala's here as well. What's Shout good, Tala? Before we start the video, I just want to let you all know that this video is sponsored by absolutely nobody. <laughs> so please leave us a subscribe, a like, a comment. That's all we get from this. Uh, but yeah, engage with us, interact with us. Hadra, the first most important thing I have to have to ask you is how are you feeling right now? Um, I'm a bit anxious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In all honesty, I mean, why do I have to keep it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I'm good, you know. Yeah. I mean, everything's fine. Everything's okay. It's the middle of a pandemic, so what? Yeah. yeah. What can you do? Right? What can I do? I yeah. mean. And there's a lot happening right now as well, which I can imagine is uh, infuriating. It's, um, I don't want to describe how it there's feels. There's no word. There's no one word. Really? I mean, it's yeah, I feel like um, it's just... It's absolutely devastating in like simple terms, you know, um, for us or me specifically football right now or what, what's happened of, of, of it. It's just um, I'm not sure if somebody else who's not been an athlete or a national team player would ever understand, yeah. uh, you know, what it really takes. You know, the hours you put in, yeah. um, the sacrifices you put in, you know, um, the, the countless things. I mean, you know, women's football in Pakistan, just imagine how much you have to give up. Mm. Um, I might... I might also be speaking of from a place of privilege rather like, you know, there's so many out there like me, my players, my teammates. Yeah. Um, they, they've just, uh, you know, just it's been bad, really. Yeah. I can, and, you know, like your journey goes back to if I correct me if I'm wrong, please. But like 2012 is when you first, you know, stepped onto the football field in Pakistan and wanted to start making a change. I actually started mark. playing in 2008. Right. Um, I started with the Women's Football Club in Karachi. Brilliant. Um, two months into playing football in my entire life, I was playing the national championship and also became the top scorer. And Wait, everybody two was months? Like, yeah, literally two months of being introduced to football as like playing, basically. You knew were the top scorer what? Yeah, the national championships. <laughs> my God. Everybody was kind of like, who's this new kid? Because I, I grew up very shy and quiet, introverted, you know. Because I've been a, a track and field athlete before that. You okay. know, so I had a lot of focus and just doing it by myself. And this was going to be my first ever team sport. Um, but, you know, um, and all the football I literally played was uh, with the kids in the neighborhood. Because right. I used to play high school basketball. Yeah. They would chalk out a goalpost uh, somewhere on the ball and put me against it. Because I used to play basketball. And the minute it flexes, they is only so I can be keeper while they practice. Oh. Um, so that's literally all the football I'd ever, ever, ever played before actually starting to play football. And that's when I was 14 years old. Um, I started playing July 14th. And my favorite player at that point was also Thierry Henry. So that's why I wow. also wear number 14. Oh, and, and there's a story behind the number. All together. Yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, you know, um, and it's not like I picked it. It's just it picked me. Yeah. And then, like ever since then, it's just become my identity, I feel like. That's brilliant. And you're a forward but, as well, if I'm not wrong. Um, yeah, I started playing right wing. Yeah. Um, I love playing on the wing because of my speed. And like, you know, I actually like to just yeah. uh, go for it. But the team sometimes needs it, needs me on, on, on strike. And I mean, it has, I mean, they're two separate positions, you know. Yeah. I love playing both. Uh, on the national team, I've played forward. Um, some club games I've played on the wing. Some I've played in the strike. Right. Some planes I've some games i've played both yeah and okay sorry i just want to go back like two and a half minutes i think (laughs) two months like you (laughs) like that's a fish to water that's literally like that's that's because okay i don't track and feel if i'm not wrong is more based on running i guess like is it well i I, i've always heard track and field Mm -hmm. i know it's very Mm -hmm. uh i know it requires a lot of endurance and stamina and like just athletic acumen Mm -hmm. in general Mm -hmm. but to go from something which does not require the involvement of even like you know like what would you call a bat or a ball or you know like an object essentially yeah Yeah, there's nothing like that and then to go from that in two months to the being the highest goal scorer in the country like um, I don't okay I, no, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry i know you're probably gonna say like you know oh, this, this has happened or whatever no. like i just i can give you a bit more of a background please, to that. please. how does um, that work so like? it's just so i used to run um uh half marathons and i was actually 11 when i ran my first for pakistan uh i was this was in india actually i still remember that i was 11 years old that was actually my first ever international stint um as 
a professional athlete at 11 years old. I mean, you see 11 year olds now um, and it's it's a different ball game. So I feel like, you know, a lot of sort of focus, a lot of a lot of my uh, drive, my goal sort of came from, um, I think, being a solo track athlete yeah. kind of really helped to keep my focus intact. Mm. And so also when you're running, you're just running, you know, you have your pace in focus, you, you got to beat your time and, you know, you have some tricks and skills, yeah. some tactics to running a longer race. But then um, when it comes to football, you have responsibility of a ball at your foot. Um, right. Yeah. And so like, you know, I mean, um, also it was new to me. Um, and growing up, I've always been like into sports and learning new sports and, you know, techniques yeah. and stuff. So I, I caught on by, by easily. That's and brilliant. I mean, my speed helped. That's I think first championship. Yeah, I played right wing. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. OK. OK. Wow. That's brilliant. And, you know, like uh, so, so 2008 and now it's 2021. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot has happened in between looking back. Uh, but unfortunately, I think a lot hasn't happened. I was just going to uh, say. Yeah. <laughs> I was compared just to say, yeah. a lot that has happened. I think the last time the. Uh, when was the last time the I'm just gonna stop get like pretending like I know this. When was the last time the women's team played? Uh, November 2014. 2014, and that was against India, if I'm not wrong. No, that was I actually the South Asian yeah. Championship. Yeah. The, okay. Uh, yeah. It's the SAF Championship that uh, was hosted in Pakistan in Islamabad. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and 2000, and, like that's a big gap already, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm sure seven years. What what's going on? Like you know, I and I know I don't want to get into this. I don't know how else to get in this subject yeah. other than what's going on like as from your vantage point yeah what do you see is going on around you right now i don't know it's um you know it's sometimes it's fe it feels like this whole f football situation over the past couple of years that i've been involved just feels like um more or less how i feel a lot of anxiety at one point like you know everything is just caving in and there's no exit so this is just the mess that football is in itself or has been in the past couple of years it's just um you know, I still, five years ago, when we stopped playing in 2015, when the takeover uh, happened for the Federation first time, I was in the building. Uh, we had our AFCC license courses going on. And I saw the take. I saw them, uh, you know, uh, breaking in and all of that. And, and, you know, hearing it happen the second time, I was not surprised at all. Um, but then the part is that, fine, we're not playing or, you know, things are at a halt, whatever, it's just don't res disrespect a sport. Don't don't disrespect athletes. Don't disrespect your football players. Um, I still have things to fall back on. There's so many who, I mean, I mean, I am truly speaking from a place of privilege. I've said this before. And, but there's so many, you know, who's, uh, who, who had food on their table because of football. You know, they never went to school, but they loved a the sport. They found direction to play for the national team, men and women, you know. Men have been playing for how many, 40, 50 years in Pakistan? Yeah. And it's just, um, you know, there's, I don't know. I mean, I'm so, it's, it's so disappointing. Yeah. It's a lot of disappointment right now, honestly, because yeah. um, it's number one sport in the world. You know, even right now with the Super League situation that happened, you yeah. saw how quick it broke down because mm. of the strength of yes. people who follow the game, who truly love the game, uh, rather than those who have no connection, but just a lot of money, you know? Yeah. So it's just, um it's it's we've we've seen a lot of greed in pakistani football as well a lot of it over the past couple of years and um i just don't understand how a sport that starts with players and ends at players um with this whole chaos you're not giving any attention to the player yeah. you know yeah. anything at all anything at all so i don't know really what's going on i wish i knew <laughs> That's a fair answer, I, I think. Mean, also, you talked about the seven years, right? I mean, I remember making that video because I was covering your women's camp that happened after seven years. The video starts uh -huh. off with that. Yeah. I mean, was that some kind of hope that you had though at the time though? Because was it something different you saw in mm -hmm. National National Commission? Uh, sorry, Normalization Committee yeah. with Daniel Limones. Did mm -hmm. it bring some other hope? Did you see something different? Were you expecting mm -hmm. another downfall afterwards? So, the so thing is that I've always been in support of anybody who has a vision, who puts players first. Mm -hmm. Now, if I see if anybody comes like it be Danny, it be anybody else from any other group. They come to me and, and the right way, the legal way, the lawful FIFA affiliations followed. You tell me you're putting players first, I will respect you so much and you have my support. And when, when that camp was happening, um, when it was announced, it was, uh, it was truly like a breath of fresh air because, um, you know, earlier, even before the camp, before the, the last ban, um, 
uh, it was the lab, the last ban and lasted a couple of months only. And as soon as the ban was lifted, the men's team had four tours and the women's team had none. So just sort of, you know, coming to uh, 2021, uh, 2020, and then figuring out that, you know, fine, we're back. We have a normalization committee that's going to, you know, fine, do something or we could hope they would. And there was a camp announced. It was, it was, it was nice. I would, I would say a lot of young girls, a lot of young ones showed up and that camp, it also kind of motivated a lot of girls who were participating in the national women's championship this time around. So the, the caliber of play, even in individual teams, some of the girls were really standing out. And I think, I mean, the plan that had been chalked out for us the next couple of months, if we had gotten a chance to follow through, we would have performed a class. Yeah, I'm sure of that because especially like Fazan Lakhari, we had him on the last podcast mm-hmm. as well. He talked about especially like every player was talking to him like, "What's my standings in the goals? How many goals have I scored? Yeah. Am I the top scorer?" Mm-hmm. They were trying to go to Danny Lamont, was trying to impress. They wanted to be in the next women's camp mm-hmm. because that picture of them the, of the calendar really gave them hope. Mm-hmm. It was really, it's, I think it was devastating as well. Yeah. You see it on your face as well. You're yeah. the captain of the team. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, like there's a lot of other, uh, you know, there, there's like an entire nation of uh, hopeful athletes who already have to go against so much Mm -hmm. just to pursue something like football in pakistan when i mean you know and and this is what bewilders me like there's this sport hasn't been active for years right and there's still people who want to play this at the highest level representing this country willingly and they're good enough to also exactly and 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 you have that yeah and regardless of who you are regardless of how much power you lust after regardless of how greedy you are just the fact that you can look past that mm-hmm. and knowingly, you know, like crush the hopes and dreams of so many people just for your own little whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah, like you said, like you, there, nobody can really understand what's happening other than there's a few who want everything mm-hmm. and they're just ruining the lives and careers and hopes and dreams of like young girls and like just anybody who wants to play this sport which is which is just devastating and like i was talking about like i know uh the the national women's uh the the camp that took place like uh we got to go there it was a lot of fun like smile no more were there mm-hmm. i was there mm-hmm. like one day yeah. it was fun uh it, it looked like it was progress in a way but like you said there was still some disparities obviously like evidently yeah, there yeah, yeah. but even then it, it felt like a right direction what was the biggest takeaway that you had from that camp with respect to the players the management the coaches everything included what was the one thing which you know ma- stood out in your head after the camp um the fact that after a long gap of five to six years we still had very talented players coming up you know it was just it was Because, you know, when you go back 2014, when we had our camp, we were just starting off the national team when I was announced captain. um, I'll give you an example of the performance of the team. Uh, We did not have the greatest coaches. Um, In all honesty, we didn't. They were not committed enough to the team. Um, And and it it showed on the players, you know, and uh, I'm the kind of, I don't know, I don't want to call myself like a captain, but like a a teammate. I'm the kind of teammate who does pick on uh, players when they're down or you know pick on i mean i attracted and they just spit it out to me and and i think that's kind of really important also so you yeah. know the 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 bond between i mean the you know you know what you know wow that was a lot of like blue outs like, <laughs> <Okay. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just yeah. trying to calm, calm myself like keep no. myself calm before i, I like mean, kill I one of these guys yeah i, I, I get you i'm not killing anybody <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> was a like joke to, that was an yeah. absolute joke yeah please no, relax i, I yeah. said you can absolutely Sorry. call yourself a captain there i was there because yeah. i recorded i have footage to show people <laughs> i don't know but <laughs> it's just um yeah so back in 2014 uh when uh we didn't have the greatest coach not the most dedicated coach we still had uh players who were so into the game and so like um our average uh, age was like 21 um Wow. Imagine there, yeah, the oldest uh, player on the team was 26 wow. at that point. Yeah, and um, I was captain at 20, 21, 20. And um, it was just, it was so good because back in 2008, 2010 and 2011 and 2012, when we would go against Nepal, we'd get beat first game 12-0 back in 2010, second game 8-0, whatever. And then back again 10-0. Um, 2014, Nepal beat us 2-0. And if, I mean, 
it's not a win, but I see that as, that as like a lot of progress. Yes. You know, a team that's beating you with a big margin comes down to 2-0, you are performing. Yeah. You know, um, it's just at that point also we lacked that direction where we lacked that, um, you know, we lacked that coaching, we lacked that that the, constant push of yeah. tactic and technical stuff yeah. from the coach yeah. and at this camp we had that you know for the first time ever the day one of camp we were not learning how to pass a ball because <laughs> that's literally how it's been you know really? like uh, past couple of years you go and okay pass the ball do some balancing uh in foot out foot we don't need to know that at this point we don't need to know that we've been playing football for a while yeah Whoever makes it to the national team knows how to pass a ball. Yeah. I mean, in, I mean come on, who are you kidding, <laughs> yeah, right? So yeah. this time around at camp, when you mentioned the difference, uh, it was just, it was a lot of technique. It was tactic, you know, it was focusing on parts of the field, you know, where each athlete plays and just kind of, it was bringing out the best of each um, because this was a camp. I mean, yeah, it did not have an end goal. We didn't know what was going to happen next. It was a one week refresher camp, but that also kind of, you know, filled people with sort of, that drive, you know, that some of them had lost hope. A lot of them left the sport. A lot of them have pursued other careers, um, you know, more or less of whatever they could. Um, you know, in the past, we've had doctors, dentists, economists playing football, and now people just don't want to trust the sport anymore, which saddens me, you know. But it's also unfair for them, unfair for me to say, you know, they gave up on the team because that's absolute, absolute bonkers. Like, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. And like you said, uh, you like you already saw that improvement with that nepal example right but then with this camp you already the biggest takeaway you said is that there was more emphasis on tactical play as opposed to just covering the basics and i i would i would assume that it yeah, felt I mean, like it was trying yeah, to get over the fact that it. you know after so many years there was still a lot of budding talent that was still playing football and you know if yeah. they had just gotten that direction yeah. just that you know um that step up yeah just that coaching camp yeah it takes them places. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like the amount of lost opportunity and yeah. like talent foregone in this yeah. situation is just absolutely heartbreaking. And I wish, and you know, like there's a lot of positives that come out from, uh, not a lot of positives, pardon me, but some positives that I guess come out from the PFF takeover situation. You kind of saw a united front uh, almost of a lot of people like in mm -hmm. the football community coming forward obviously yeah. and talking about how, just how messed up the situation is. Uh, I just wish this would translate more and more into either i would call it the mainstream thought or just people in general mm -hmm. who would look at this and say okay i might not be a football fan yeah. oh actually i'm probably a football fan yeah. i'm just not a fan of pakistani football yeah. and for all of you who are fans of football but not fans of pakistani football fuck you you know what i mean like what the, <laughs> what the hell is going on with beep, that beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it, honestly beep. It's, oh uh, can we believe that i promised my dad i wouldn't swear i'm sorry dad <laughs> there, he saw one episode he's like what's up with you bro like, <laughs> but uh but yeah i mean seriously it's just messed up how how many people in this country uh probably do follow football and everything is happening but but i wish there would be more of an outcry from from the mainstream towards this kind of issue and i wish it would be enough to actually change something yeah you know even if they even if there's an outcry in in pakistan most of the time it doesn't really lead to anything being changed yeah. you know what i mean yeah. um it's just infuriating but did you feel like there was some level of a united front do you wish it was more people who um, were doing this there still is um you know um i feel like it also started when um a couple of us, we stepped out of um, continuing to play in the championship. It was the six of us. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, myself, Khatija Kazmi, Mashar al Hussain, Maria Khan, um, and um, oh my God, she's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm missing her name. Oh. oh my God. We can take as much time as you want. No, I know Sarah, Sarah Amin was also there, but. Oh my God, this idiot. Technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back very shortly. <laughs> I am forgetting your name. She's like, <laughs> no. I don't know how. <laughs> it's just go we through your phone. No, go through your phone. Hey, Omar, what's up? Okay. Oh how you been? Oh my God. I'm all right, not I, too bad. I, I do Fine. not forgive myself for this. No? I am so sorry. You know who you are if you're listening. <laughs> Zara. Oh. Zara. 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 Okay, yeah. Zara. Oh yeah, well done, Zara. <laughs> Give her a Zara, you're that special. She didn't Zara, forget your name. I love you. She stopped the podcast <laughs> so just to sorry. know your name. Yeah, go on. No, I didn't look it up. I just came. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. I swear to God. No, no, no. Swear, we, don't know. we believe no, obviously, you. Obviously, obviously, no, we no. It happened in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> so when the six of us from uh, 
Screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, please. Go. Continue. Yeah. When the yeah. six of us pulled out, uh, yeah. we, we were all from different teams, you know, um, representing different departments and teams. And we pulled out and we decided not to play the uh, the championship that was announced by the Ashba group mm-hmm. um, because we don't stand for it. There was a massive backlash from our teams and uh, the management of the teams. And um, I'm not going to name any, I'm not saying it's it's mine. Um, it's just, um, you know, we would have absolutely, absolutely incredibly loved if we had gotten that backing from our teams. Yeah. The players on my team, absolutely incredibly supportive. Um, they understood, I'm so proud of them, so proud of everybody on my team that because of the fact that they understood why we were doing what we were doing. Yeah. Stepping out, they knew why exactly we were doing it. And we had their support. And um, and and I mean, it's what it's what matters at the end of the day. You know, you have to be there for your teammate. Your teammate's going to be there for you. It's just blind trust. It's just that faith. Um, you know, even if you're not in good terms with the with a player, with a teammate off field, you get in field, you're going to be the best buddies. You're, go- yeah. you're going to thrash the other team together. Yeah. And I feel like that's the beauty of, of sports. I don't know how I'm saying this. I don't know what got me here. To say uh, this. We were talking about the lack of support for, yeah. you know, what happened after, um, uh, after yeah, this yeah, whole yeah, 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 yeah. PFF takeover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the, I'm glad that, the, you know, media plays a huge role. Um, I, I would really like to thank everybody who was supporting the right stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's open. You know, we talk. Everybody knows what's going on. What the ground realities are. These guys are not new in the industry. These yeah. media guys. Um, they obviously, I'm not fully supporting them also because there are a couple of you know a couple of bad apples. Obviously, in every yeah. bunch. Um, Everywhere. Yeah, but we did have. I I still think we have support. It's just, um, it does not yet overpower what the other group has to bring on the table. That makes that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I want, yeah, and I want to talk to you about the National Women's Championship 2021 really yeah. quick. Uh, and you know, segueing off of that, almost uh, take me to the tournament, right? Mm-hmm. And I want you to talk about what exactly was different about this one compared to the previous either National Women's Championships or any you know local tournament that you mm-hmm. did. You feel like there was a difference in terms of like the tournament itself yeah. and the and the st- and the style and quality of play in the tournament. Um, if I compare it to the immediate last one, I think uh, way better. Um, you know, um, comparing it to the ones we had seven years ago would not make any sense. Fair, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, that's a, that's a different co- time. This is a different time. But like comparing it to the real r- l- the last one that was also um, um, put up together by NC, different uh, chair, different situation, different organization. Uh, and... Um, what I absolutely incredibly loved was I love how I'm saying how absolutely incredibly, <laughs> uh, absolutely incredibly. That's how good it was. It's absolutely yeah. incredibly amazing. Absolutely incredibly <laughs> loved the fact <laughs> that we had coverage. Yeah, you know yeah. the women's sport, football in Pakistan, women's football in Pakistan had coverage, um, as much coverage as we had. It was the first time ever we've ever had, um, and I would say this was even uh, more coverage than the CEF we played. Oh. Um, in terms of you know regular stuff that's coming in in terms of um obviously online was not a situation back then in 2014 we had it on tv but you know it's just that hype you know you create you support your girls and women uh, of the country you know um pursuing us pursuing sports in pakistan as a career is an absolute I mean, Nightmare. unrealistic situation. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a dream. You yeah. know, if you can make it. If you're not a cricketer, that too. If you're not a rich cricketer, yeah. you're not going to make it well. Yeah. This is how it works nowadays. And that's yeah. a sad reality of it. Yeah. You know, they won 1992, the World Cup. Cricket is the best sport in Pakistan. What if they hadn't? Yeah. Um. You know. We probably um, wouldn't have this prime minister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Oh my sorry, god. Sorry, sorry. No, Shots fired. <laughs> pew pew pew. Stating facts. I mean that's I think that's why most of us voted for him. Yeah. Thing is, you know, that's the thing. So so what if like you support a sport enough with as many talented players who could bring you a big championship home? If you're not putting in that that investment of all sorts, I'm not just talking monetary. I'm talking about, you know, you give that recognition, you give them respect, you give them opportunity, you give them equal opportunity, men yeah. and women, you know, yeah. you focus on equity, you focus on your players. How are we not going to win it? Yeah. None of the players would ever go on field to lose a game. Anybody who represents Pakistan does it for a reason. Yeah. Um, I think we are beyond a point or we, we our sport is not um you know um 
I don't know what the correct word here would be. Developed, perhaps. Um, developed is a nicer word. <laughs> <laughs> so our our, our sport is not um, out there enough, or like you know, fancy enough, yeah. or Advanced. mainstream. Right. Mainstream is also nice. You know, what you guys are getting there. Come <laughs> yeah. on, oh, pick it up, pick it up. You know, um, where you know. I'm not disrespecting any athletes all across Pakistan, but then you know there's a point you know when when you are playing a privileged sport to an extent you take it for a ride and you you know t- take it for granted. So all those tours, all those representations representations of the country are just you having a good time abroad. Yeah, and that's the that's real that's real. Right. It happens. Um, being from the sports background, it happens so much. Yeah. Us footballers, we don't even have that um, sort of luxury to even think about. Um, exploiting our own sport you know it's just because we've been fighting for it so much for so long so hard it's just um, all we want is a chance to play and to play respectfully and be recognized yeah. um, that's literally all we ask for you know I've been saying this for years the day Pakistan gives back to its athletes you guys will see a, a whole new situation I I completely, yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think there's a lot of stories coming out of NWFC as well that Richie emanates what you're saying. Especially yeah. like I when like I got like tears coming when Hazara girls FA went back home. Yeah. And they got that welcome because there's yeah. stories of what these girls went through. And their average age is like 14 years old, yeah. I think. And yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm cutting no, no, what fine. what <laughs> truly saddens me is that this is the Pakistani football they were introduced to and this is what they have experienced and that's all they have experienced. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just, it devastates my heart inside of me. It's just, you know, uh, back in 2014, 2015, when it happened, the, uh, 2016, the ban happened, uh, the, you know, the whole situation was happening. I was focused on just fighting to bring it back. You know, I might not have been out there in the open, but I was fighting day in, day out because, you know, when I say I was fighting for it, it's just a lot of people coming and saying, um, your sport is done. Why are you still playing? The national team is dead, X, Y, Z. Um, you don't just put your energy elsewhere. And I'm like, no, I got faith. Like, you know, I came here, just been a couple of years. There's going to be more. Um, because coming from where I am, I faced so much stuff that I didn't want any of these other girls to face at all. Yeah. Um, being able to compete is a big thing. But, you know, every day a girl goes from her house to the football ground. Um, some of them take public, but most of them take public transport. Um, they leave their house uh, covered up in burqas. They go to field. They play. If a man sees them, they get taunted. I've been taunted. I've been threatened not to show up again any, anymore. We don't get football fields, so we train on cricket pitches, and it's just um, that's that's where um, that's how I've been here. Like that's what's taken me to come here. You know. Other than that, there's family. There's extended family and immediate family. If you have immediate family support, it's everything. But then if you, um, and and I think that's what I keep telling the girls. If you have immediate family support. Um, let go, let, let alone like let go of your extended family, immediate family support, take it up, like take it up and use it mm-hmm. as a ladder, use it as a step. Um, it's, it's a lot of things, you know, that girls, uh, uh, a woman, a girl in Pakistan has to go through to pursue even a single education. Getting out of the mm-hmm. house is, you know, uh, yeah. it's a big deal. It's an, it becomes an ordeal to just get an education. <sighs> but um, pursuing sports, especially football, um, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot. It takes yeah. a lot. Just give it back to them now. And I like beyond just the physical state of existence for players and matches or lack mm-hmm. thereof matches, you know, yeah. for the players and 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 like you said the things that a football player a, a female football player has to go through in Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Uh like it's it's so un it it shouldn't happen. Like, mm-hmm. you know, d- but but this is the reality i can't imagine what kind of an effect you know this reality can have on like the mental health of football mm-hmm. players in mm-hmm. pakistan mm-hmm. like like one aspect of course lost opportunity and you know things that you miss out in terms of what you're getting as a yeah. player or the experience or the you know but then beyond that it's like what kind of long term effect are we potentially having mm-hmm. on so many women like you said young women who just started yeah, playing yeah, yeah. and and this is the this is the Pakistani football that they have been exposed to for the yeah. first time. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I can't imagine the the type of effect that it has on their mental. And I know you, uh, this is a subject that you deeply look mm-hmm. into as well. Mm-hmm. What are your observations? 
Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, I've always advocated for mental health for athletes. And it's mostly because I had my first ever breakdown while I was on the basketball field. Yeah. Um, we could go back to that. But yeah, I do feel like, you know, it, it you know, when I said when I said all the players are devastated, when I said, you know, um, this is all the football they've seen. When I said there's a lot that girls have to, um, you know, sacrifice to get here. It really takes a toll on their mental health for sure. There's a couple on my team, my own team, that I had to sort of, you know, that would open up about what they were feeling or how they were feeling because of it. Um, because of um, even, you know, because all the teams were there in Karachi, right? They were all there when it was happening. They were all there. Uh, we were all ready to play, go to training. We don't know if we have training today anymore because it's been canceled. We don't know if we have a game tomorrow or not. So it's just that not being able to compete um for something you've been training away from home because for my team we have training camps and for two months if you're away you're with the team a couple of months before that you've been training and training and training you have one goal in sight um um and you also know that you know you're playing so your family can get fed it's just a lot to take on some of them are just soul bread on us you know not even like they don't even have a lot of support so it's just um you know, it starts there and then it's, it's, I mean, uh, my, my own self. I mean, you know, I've been, uh, my first ever breakdown was, uh, at, at, uh, it was the, so I played on the basketball national team also. Thanks, Nina. <laughs> Nina Williams, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I played on the national team for basketball and we were at camp. This was 2016, January, and I had a great training session. Um, after that, you know, it just, everything was normal except i i just had a breakdown and i didn't realize what it was and it just went on for a while um eventually months later you know i sort of figured out something was not right and i had that support um and um it was just uh, i know what it takes to get out of there that black hole that you're going because you know depression or anxiety is just for me i'd feel like you know you imagine you're in a straight jacket and you're just like zipped together zipped up and you're in a soundproof room and you're freaking screaming and nobody can hear you, but you're still in that straight jacket and yeah. you're still in that soundproof room. Um, that's just, that's a place that I've reached or I had uh, at one point because, yeah. um, uh, also because football had stopped yeah. in, in Pakistan yeah. um, earlier yeah. when the last ban was uh, yeah. taking place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the last one had because it was my sanctuary right like it's everything i do is is for that sport you know i just feel like i have this kind of service that i have to to just you know just it's just but that's just who i am you know yeah. i have that drive that compassion and that passion and that determination to just play and yeah. perform and uh, represent it, it became my my sanctuary in the simplest of terms where that's where i found home and yeah. you know um what yeah, all that i had fought for for years it had stopped we were not yeah. playing football and i know what the i know the effect it had on me then and um right now i'm i'm working jobs and um i do have that distraction at some point i don't know if I, it's um respectful enough to call that job a distraction i love it yeah. um but it's just um it's taken the same sort of toll i just know how to cope with it better now yeah. you know so um speaking from first person experience it has not been not been kind yeah. um to our mental health as all of athletes oh, i can imagine and like I said, it's your sanctuary it's where yeah. you get away from all of the other bs that this country and yeah. you know most of the world throws at us like this our reality is we all find something to kind of escape it mm -hmm. often people find things that they control or they own so they kind of get into it and they can never get out and they're yeah. in their safe space but but ultimately your profession relies unfortunately on other people who have no regard i would think at this point yeah for all of the above stated issues that or problems that players in pakistan face just because of their blatant and you know just, just outright disgusting yeah actions i guess yeah. is the yeah. best way to say it and intent yeah just absolutely filthy intent and uh yeah it's 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 you know and and based on th what you just said, I really want to know, like, what advice would you give to, I'm, I'm sure there's a country full of players right now who are absolutely devastated, you know, the same way that you, uh, 
were and you talked about going into that place in 2013 how would you what would you say to them to kind of maybe help them get out of you know the place they're in right now um it's uh, i don't know it's i don't want this to be a blind guiding a blind situation of course yeah um, context matters in yeah. all things it yeah. does but you know i mean i i mean i would tell them i wouldn't tell them this but like i would um half them half them trust my experiences and all that i have been through and uh, the fact that i know that they've got this like because you know you see these players they're young players 19 year olds 20 year olds who are going through massive massive mental health issues for whatever reasons and they play sport they play football and they play it so excellently um and you know it's just don't take it away from them first of all this is to everybody who's messing up with our sport yeah um it is just it it is breaking up players it is truly breaking players and but yeah coming back to me talking to my players it's just you guys hold on we got this yeah but we have to we have to stick together to this for 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 just keeping that foot down yeah. you know yeah we don't need we need to stand like we just need to be together right now we need to unite we need to stand our ground we we can't let this go right now yeah because right now it's like we're hanging by a thread yeah um you know and when the thread you're out of thread what do you do you out of rope what do you tie a knot just hang yeah. on that's what we have to do right now yeah we're not letting go yeah. but um if only everybody's all together in this you know we're going to get this yeah and i think it involves uh you know players and involves coaches and involves teams departments like mm-hmm. you said like a lot of the a lot of the entities that might not be fully supporting the movement of trying to get football back uh do you understand the perspective of the other side like just outright the ashfaq group and what mm-hmm. they're doing mm-hmm. uh can you understand or respect where they're coming from like <laughs> i don't think we have to agree with their methods <laughs> at yeah, all yeah, yeah. uh which which you know are just outrightly which have brought us to this point where you know fifa's banned pakistan mm-hmm. once again mm-hmm. uh but do you as a player or at any level understand the motives or intent behind you know why they did what they did um i it's just um it's it's power it's it's all they want you know um you know in some of the statement statements i'm not bringing this up myself it's what they've published their videos and their texts and everything and their um outright telling the world that they don't really care about the ban or, or Pakistan being banned by the FIFA where it is a global situation it is um it is noted we all know that a football federation can only be affiliated by the FIFA it yeah. can only be run by the FIFA yeah. if even if you know they say they claim that they will have their own football running um they might be great local football they might just do something you know who knows yeah. but what then you know um when a 6 year old starts playing football in a country they do want to end up representing the nation yeah. um especially in this day and age nobody starts playing i mean of course kids of course you know you come you you talk to a teenager everybody on the national uh women's football championship everybody wanted to be a part of the national team and you could see it in their game yeah, yeah. um it's just that drive yeah. you know it doesn't matter how good they are at that point it's just their drive and um yeah i just i don't know what they it's it it doesn't make sense yeah. you know uh for me so i trained in germany with a couple of bundesliga clubs i was in uh, i was in france for a bit i was in the us 2 years ago training and it's just you know when i i go out there i'm not going as hard i'm literally going as a pakistani football player yeah. and it's just i hold this country in such high regard as i should i mean yeah. and and i have no doubts that i ever not will you know it's yeah. just um and then you come home you see the ground realities you see the differences you know outside you go abroad you get so much respect just for being an athlete you know just for um and then you represent the national team and then you you're playing a sport that's world class so yeah um i wish we give the same kind of respect to p- our players here in pakistan yeah and what did you feel like uh when you go uh, internationally i think you do you still play for uh, the club in the maldives in the summer maldives no so maldives itself is having trouble with the federation oh my and God. You know, yeah <laughs> that's just south asia for you yeah <laughs> like that's we're just I developing <laughs> yeah that is pretty much and also the unashamed like it's almost sheer arrogance if <laughs> we'll do our football ourselves you just saw what happened with the super it league is. 
like exactly. Fans, fans I mean, reacted. They said, "What the hell is this?" It, it yeah. is. That's that's what I'm saying. You know, when I say we well, have to stand. I mean, right now I see a lot of support for you know things to work out normally. We don't want to ban. It's, it's going to be the worst thing ever. You yeah. know, we see that support. We just need to stand our ground and we need to push. We, there needs to be a bigger movement right now. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, from a player's point of view, we are thinking of doing like a players' union and thing, but it just um, it's low key not possible um, to do it without it being a, a much bigger movement altogether. Where we have people, we have all stakeholders involved, almost all just pushing that agenda one on one, and uh, we need that right now. We need it today. Yeah. Um, I would love a word from Mr. Ron Khan. He hasn't spoken a word yet. I know he has bigger problems. Um, you know, well, I know he. Ha- our country has bigger problems, but um, let's try solving the ones that can be solved first. Yeah. And I mean. And, and let's. I mean, nobody's asking him to solve anything. We're just to, asking you I mean, to talk about it. What right? is? I mean, why we're relying on him right now too much is because there's representatives from his political party in the third party. Yeah. that has intervened yeah. yeah you know so when i when i am tweeting or when i am posting or when i am releasing videos and speaking to him it's because get a hold of your man yeah you know in literal terms um <clears throat> excuse me and that's literally all there is yeah like, that's why he needs to intervene and he needs to make that decision you know if somebody is representing your party down low they can't just come up and take over and no. this is absolute i don't want to use the word yeah it is absolutely that perfect uh, but, but yeah and, and i wish there would be a little more uh you know like direct involvement in the situation yeah. i wish it wouldn't be like the the role of a silent observer uh you're running the country i don't know i, I can't say anything trying beyond to. you're trying i can't say anything <laughs> beyond what you said uh on that subject uh and i really do like you can hope you can pray you can fight yeah. Uh, beyond that, I mean, it's like you know, we can we can hope that more and more people who learn about the subject, who who understand exactly what's happening in the ground realities, can mm-hmm. understand just how important this is for yeah. the development, not just of people uh, who are players and managers and so on and so forth, but I'm talking about just just our society in general. Like, mm-hmm. how what what kind of an impact it has to have, uh, you know, a solid strong team uh, representing the country on international platforms, yeah. like like you guys would have done so excellently had things b- resumed and yeah. like you mentioned you have been you know competing internationally and training internationally what is the perspective that you know uh, any person uh, you know in footballing associations or teams or bodies internationally what perception do they have of pakistan like what do they think is happening in pakistan do they know what's happening in pakistan um they d- so uh, people affiliated or have been in in, in the football uh, fraternity for a while they do have an idea um except some don't even know pakistani football exists um if i'm talking about straight up you know football family across the world it's just um when you tell them this is what's going on in my country they're not surprised because they know right yeah. now all development countries are going through some sort of yeah. um, situation here yeah. and um my only my only call here is that not all of these countries are being run by a national sports icon mm. so this yeah. is a straight <laughs> up to That's a really you know what i mean i mean yo, point there. fax machine <laughs> yeah literally it is. Yeah. i mean if not now then when i mean you know i mean this is his chance right now uh, to save the the a powerful sport like football that just changed the world. Yeah. This will go down in history. What happened in Europe with the Super League? This will go down in history, and he, everybody knows. Yeah. You know, um, there's a lot of private entities in Pakistan investing into the sport in football. Um, there's tournaments going on. Um, it is just sad that the 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 top level situation, you know, is just so messed up. Yeah. I mean, you guys are supposed to represent us. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of football being played in Pakistan. A lot of football. Yeah. All age groups. Trust yeah. me. And also the other fact is that there is a fan base there. It's not that it doesn't exist because I have access to like the numbers here. So like, <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> he does. Yes, <laughs> of course so, he does. Like so if like I I was running the Mike Mike Kuju thing as well. So if I go to the top five matches, right? 
you three matches just group stages matches were out watched by the final um they they were more watched more by them than the final of the national championship the men's team yeah so that fact that we had more people watching women's team which is something that's often seen mm-hmm. as like can you share these with me yeah of course. i gotta tweet this i'll send you <laughs> <laughs> so I like love this. so like so like it's the top five okay the first three are old wait matches. does anybody else know this or has anybody else no it's exclusive on the <laughs> mic exclusive yes okay go today we release <laughs> so like wapta versus gilbert Gil- Gil- is the number four most most watch match. What's the number one most watch? That's uh, Pakistan versus Cambodia in 2019. Oh no no no! Talk about this championship. So that one is Wapta versus Gilgit WFC in Pakistan. Yeah, in, in WFC, so women's match. Oh, okay. Then you had Hazara Girls Football Academy, which is again yeah, like obviously. that's just a, yeah. against Hazara Kweto Football Academy, by the way. That was the second match at the NWFC, yeah. and that's one of the most watched matches on my Kujo. That's wow. And then I go to my and go into Facebook. The match with uh, what was the team? I, mean, I can't find. I apologize, but Pakistan Army beat them twenty five zero. That was a uh, YRC, right? I apologize. I shouldn't bring that up, but YRS, yeah. right? But for example, that had a reach of two million people. Two million people saw that image of wow. that score line. There is a fan base there. And by the way, we put no two money. Two million is a lot of people. Yes. By the way. Okay. Like exactly. We're hum- saw our subscribers. <laughs> 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 like, I'm like, teen subscribers. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you talking like, about? I, that's saw. true. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be with anyway. Saw is like I call you guys. Like guys. Y'all gotta follow these guys. If, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> We're clipping the hell out of that. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly this two million people. Then it has uh, the image of uh, them going back to their city of uh, the uh, Hazara Quarter yeah, Girls. Yeah. Zora Nasser in the front. That got 1.2 million. Yeah. Then you had the Wapta matches. Those oh, are 700,000 okay. average. When I yeah. put up Wapta images, I know that's going to do well. Yeah. And we put no money into this, by the way. Just before the the Shwa group came in, yeah. we actually got a budget approved for boosting. Oh so we were God. on the verge to push it even further. Like nice. Shabar Shab- and I were like going to put some money into it. And through our own card as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you guys see, so, like, so, there's so, a fan base there. So yeah, and, and, and you know, so when I say that it's... You know, football is not just players. Just like one footballer cannot do anything. If he doesn't get those 10 passes or five passes, he's, he cannot score. It's a team game. Yeah. Yeah. Football, players come in. We have the staff that comes in. We have people who are supporting the team that comes in. We've got guys like him that come in. We've got the fans that gangsters, come in. Gangsters, sorry. We've yeah. got like... <laughs> yeah. Straight up gangsters. I wouldn't go yeah, with that. <laughs> yeah. He's right. probably the, the sweetest gangster I've met in he my is. entire life. He is. <laughs> the sweetest gangster and the most vicious thing <laughs> you see him off no street. but Thank you yeah. see it's like it's you know that that's the kind of people that have been affected by that with yeah. all of this that's going on um that's just a bit of my point before you continue with the stats please yeah like if I, there's mean, I can go on for because you've already blown my mind and i'm like this is I'm <laughs> gonna, i will tweet the heck out of these i'll send you screenshots straight off perfect this. because but people need to know what's going on yeah and people need to know like, where we left off like i mean just average is to 50,000 reach. Can you reach. imagine that? 50,000 reach. That is a lot. And we had, and by the way, when I joined PFF as a freelancer, yeah. we had around 2,000 likes on Facebook. Yeah. And without, again, no boosting. That's yeah. the important part. If anyone knows social media, you need money to boost. To of, course, likes. of course. Yeah. So we got 30,000 by this time at this point. So 30,000. 15,000. on. Also, that's just women's football, guys. Yes. Yeah. I like, to, I like to make a point when we had the women's camp and the uh, NWFC because I was making um, like PDFs as well to show to ha- mm-hmm. Harun Malik as well like this is women's camp always just better <laughs> like <laughs> frankly speaking <laughs> like like during the national championship we had like a good ri- rise yeah. but like yeah. this was astronomical like uh, and the the lead up to quarterfinals the Shabir was like hey because our followers are there okay because our likes are there okay and then we also launched a YouTube channel with that mm. without anything I just put up the highlights of KU versus uh, what was it now uh, Masha United. Yeah. That without anything got 20,000 20, views easy. Whoa. Yeah. Without trying. Yeah. Just put one thumbnail, say match highlights, and people were uh, happy about it. And they watched it. There wow. is people interested in football. Yeah. There can't be no football. There's people watchers. interested. There's people trying to push the sport out yeah. to the general yeah. public. There's people who are playing the sport. Yeah. But then there's also people who are disrespecting the heck out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, disrespecting the heck out of all those numbers you mentioned. Like exactly. uh, the biggest myth is like, oh, nobody watches football here. Well, there you go. They do. Also, the other thing is like they also attack specifically women football. Yeah, like yeah we women's get, football. Exactly. You like know, that, oh, there's no viewership. Why should we sponsor this? Well, sir, here you go. <laughs> yeah, here, I'll make you, you know. I'll make you a sponsorship deal. But not <laughs> yeah. You know like, what I mean? Even like. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? Gangster. <laughs> crack, crack. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> job. But also another thing, like we saw that in our own stats. So we had uh, interviews with Maria Khan. Mm-hmm. That when we launched the first, Mush. Could say 40 views, I think. 
now it's at 900, which I know doesn't sound a lot. No, but it's for you, us, it's astronomical. Yeah. We, are, yeah. we, had, well, we had 700 subscribers at the time. So we had yeah. like more subscribers. Uh, more than views than views. subscribers on the video. There you yeah. go, thank you. Yeah, so I mean, there you. is a fan base there. There is something there. There's absolute bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> I have no, no doubts. I've never had doubts about that. Or just ever. go to like watch the videos of Liari uh, football happening. Like, there you it's, go. Yeah, like it's just astronaut. It's huge crowds, people yeah. watching it and yeah. seat laga ke khudi aake yeah. yeah. They want to watch it. There is a football crowd there. And now, unfortunately, it's all gone. And and you, you know what 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 is the most important part right now here is that there's also uh, people who did not support women's sport or women's football ever are, are, have been so accepting. Yeah. Have been so sort of like you know it's it's like uh, the other side of the the coin. It's just yeah. um, because now there's there's role models. Now there's direction. Now there's you know scope or was. Yeah. Sadly, it's just uh, every time I say was to these things, it just hurts. Yeah, I get you. <sighs> so sad. Yeah, depressing matters. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, I had know. to do it. I had to do it. My bad. Yeah. And, <laughs> too, yeah. and actually, on that note, I really do want to mention as well. Uh, you should have done this probably earlier. Uh, usually, a smile for those of you watching who are wondering where he is. Uh, he couldn't <laughs> make it. Sorry. Uh, so here we are, you know, filling in. And I really, I'm really glad we got to, you know, fill in for a smile. Get, get <laughs> sick more often, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. no, smile, no, miss you, man. Well, does smile have any facts up his sleeve? <laughs> no, I don't think not like that. Uh, but actually, I w- so as somebody who doesn't you know i i keep up with football thanks to smile and mm-hmm. the fact that we yeah. are married <laughs> married thanks to this podcast forever now like and and and, and him being in pff Plus. and everything yeah it helps but something about liari like i've yeah. i've from from any footballing talent any mma fighter any boxer especially yeah. a lot of boxers as well yeah. that i've spoken to i actually got to do uh the uh, in the people's stadium in Leari they had like the the Amir no Abu Bakr Trunkwala boxing hall where mm-hmm. they held Usman Vizier versus Carlos B.S. Lopez uh-huh. uh, which was for the ABF welterweight championship of the world live on Geo Super it was nuts and then I got no it's in Leari I was like okay I've yeah. never been and I was yeah. really excited to go and I went there and when I saw the crowd turn up for the event yep and when I saw the boxers from Liari go in, yep. and then even Usman Razi is from Gilgit Badalistan. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he got an ovation and a half. Like yeah. people are so into the sport. It's because they respect the sport. You know, it's yeah. they're, they're 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 there for a good competition. They they that's the that's the beauty of sports altogether. You know, it's yeah. you know it's it's people that bring it together. It's you know uh, football. This this whole debate that's been going on about the yeah. Super League also. It's factory workers who started playing football first. Mm. Yeah. And now it's being run by like these rich men who have nothing. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know. That's what the you. banner they had the Super League. It's a working class sport. It's and a now working it's class eaten sport. Eaten by the rich. All right, yeah. 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 See, there you go. Yeah, eaten by the rich. Yeah. Um, and um, Leari, they learn how to play football or they just come out like that. Yeah. They don't know how. They, they, I mean, oh God, it's incredible. I love it so much. Like, um, they don't know how to walk. They still know how to kick a ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> literally, you know, I love that. Legit, legit. Um, and uh, so our, you know, it's it's absolutely incredible. So we usually would go with my club. Uh, we used to, I, when I used to play football, just United. Uh, okay. We used to go and we used to compete against these boys. And we started off with the U14 and um, the U17, actually. And then we were just, blown away because u17 is still like under 17 yeah. and you know they were so freaking fast and they were so like you forget tiki taka mm. literally you know if you see these kids coming in you know uh one sock in one sock out you know their shoes aren't like adidas or nike or like you know fancy pumas yeah. or their their um you know kits are not you know yeah. sponsored or anything at yeah. all they're literally just picking up every day they're coming and they're playing um they beat us they beat us uh 2-0 my club 3-0 actually wow. they were so good yeah they're really good there's about a hundred th- there's about 1000 plus clubs in leari who are half sorry, might not sorry, even sorry 1000 so they're not even registered more <laughs> than that and I'm not even making this up so every street you'll have a football club going on you know they have their <laughs> own banner and stuff 
Wow. And there is a reason why it's called Mini Brazil. Have you ever been yeah. to Leari during the World Cup, the FIFA World Cup? No, I've never been to Every Karachi. Every house, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like we have to go. Basically. Yeah, we so have to go to Karachi. So you were not even around during the national no, championship. No, I was. Oh my, my god, like major man, phone. my boss will know now. But I was in the office just making graphics. <laughs> 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 like I was like, he's like, yeah, I'm like, post banana. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh god. Uh, we had an intern there, mm-hmm. so like he would have a, uh, he would send me like score lines, guy, <laughs> and I was yeah, making it. Captions, but I was like, like that's what we were wait, doing. Wait, wait, you were gonna go though? Yeah, we were gonna. I mean, we had a whole plan, but like, I was uh, basically gonna go full time with them. But that's another story. Yeah. But like, carry on. Huh. So yeah, Liari, they're they're incredible. And then you know, we were like, okay, we gotta pick up the pace. We played against the same guys next time. It was uh, it was two two, and then we won the last match. But point is, it is U seventeen, but there's yeah. like smaller kids on that team. Yeah. And um they're literally like short. And 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 what I love about training with those guys is that um they're going to respect you no matter what gender you are. They're going to play their full game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't lose that essence of playing football. Yeah. You know, it's not nasty. It's nice sportsmanship. And it's very refreshing to see it coming out of these, you yeah. know, kids and these young boys and girls. Yeah. Um a lot of girls coming coming from Liari, you know, Balochistan United. We have a lot of players. Uh, it was, I think, one of the most inclusive football clubs I've played in in Pakistan. Wow. You know, we had all minorities. We had Hazara, we had Gilgit covered. <laughs> we had, um, you name it, Balochistan, Punjab. Um, that's brilliant. I think that's what I love the most about the NWFC. We had, we had yeah, yeah and, we, and, and we also had like, so when I say minorities, it's I don't mean to be disrespectful. No, it's no. just uh, the label we've given them. Yeah. We had players from all kinds of religions also. That's and so it was a lot of fun playing. It was just, you know, because that's what I love about football is that it's just, it's a sport that everybody loves. It's yeah. a sport that that does not matter when it comes to race, a boundary is your religion what language you speak what country you come from um it's just this it's incredible there's like in my mind right now it's just this really shiny flaming hot ball in my mind right now because of how i feel about football oh. but it's also <laughs> like it's supposed to be looking really hot and hard and yeah. heated like yeah. the sun but it's just like really cool that's how football feels yeah um, that's a brilliant. That's the, I was like, <laughs> that should be our logo. <laughs> I was, for pressing I, I was gonna say, isn't that like, like the, how the FIFA World Cup like cup looks like as well? It's way? not on fire. Yeah, but like it's on that. fire. No, no, it's but like it's just this this random piece of you. It doesn't even have to be a ball. It's this blob of light that mm-hmm. I'm imagining football to be, or like how it's oh, made oh. me feel. It's just like you that's know, it's beautiful. Flaming hot, but then <laughs> Shiny, the, but the intention is just like the the intention made the. When you light, grab it, you the burn. energy and the whole uh, aura feel of that light is just so cool. Yeah, like it's like it. Well, light usually like signifies like hope zen. in a way, right? Just, so yeah, like, it I mean, is, that's it what is. It, I think. That's also something we want to try. I would like to talk about, like, well, especially women's football, mm-hmm. right? Like that is an empowering thing as well, right? There's I mean, just there's so much hope, man. There's um, some of us still have it. Um, you know when this. Uh, when this suspension or when this cancellation was announced for the championship, um, you know, a lot of the players were, they just didn't know what was going on. And, you know, I, w- I would have kids coming into me, 16, 17 year olds, like, we don't know who to support. I was like, you have to support nobody. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, literally don't get into it. Yeah. Um, again, you know, um, why? Because I was sort of protecting them. We know all the senior players are kind of like, you know, taking all the shit in literal terms. Um, but, you know, it's just, um, I don't know if I just want them to hold on, like, you know, and see how it goes. I mean, no news is not the greatest news sometimes, and that's what's happening right now. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's kind of got AWOL at this moment. Yeah. Like, I yeah. don't know what's happening yeah. in myself as well. Like, I yeah. mean, there's no word. I keep uh, uh, trying to, you know, Check. poke them once yeah. in a while. No, we see that. I mean, I think two hours before this podcast, you tweeted as well again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you did. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I was telling him, like, I'm like, she's coming in. <laughs> All guns blazing. Like we're gonna get some good. We're gonna get to talk about some good yeah, stuff right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, I, I also want to talk about something like a little change of pace, a little mm-hmm. shift gears, different thing. But three world records, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go one, two, and three. Yeah. First one I'm most curious about yeah. is the match played at the lowest altitude ever recorded. If I'm yeah, right. That and was, yeah. And sorry, but I'm very curious about this since you've been coming in because high altitude means less oxygen, 
uh, you can't breathe. And that's what that's what my mind is telling me, right? Because it's less oxygen you can't breathe, so it's harder to play. Mm-hmm. What's it like playing it at the lowest altitude? Yeah. Well, well, so there's like? a there's a cool backstory to it. Also, pretty interesting. So when um, so there has been a game played at the highest altitude. You know that? Oh, really? And it was the same organization that I played for. Uh, it's called Equal Playing Field. Yeah. Okay. Um, they go by the hashtag Any Girl Anywhere. Um, <laughs> and so they make these world record matches they, they make these world records or break these world records to set an example and for the for all the girls like to have that right to come and play and perform at, at, at wherever they are um so they so there was a team of a couple of players who climbed up Kilimanjaro uh in Tanzania and um, <laughs> it's the women's team uh two teams they went all uh, all the way up um they freaking climbed Kilimanjaro. Oh my God. Right, like and then that, played that's, a football that's, match. That's my peeps right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, but uh, yeah, and they played a... Uh, th- so that was recorded the highest altitude football match. And I saw it on Twitter and I was just a bit like, oh shit, I wish I was part of it, Formal. right? Yeah. That happened like, majorly. <laughs> a week later, I don't know what God like had planned for me i get a call from them or like an email from them and they're like we did the highest and now we don't want to do the lowest would you want to be part of it and i was like i'm getting out on the flight <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be there on it. <laughs> see you guys in five hours <laughs> I'll be there in two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. So I'm outside. Um, I'm outside. And, and I was no, uh, outside. so so it was in Jordan. Um, we trekked 90 kilometers across Jordan. Um, you know, all the mountains and all the wadis there, and um, um, and that was a night. And then on the way, we did four football clinics. Uh, where we were actually engaging uh, more than a hundred um kids from underserved communities. Um actually introducing some of them to football you know mostly refugees uh, mostly people from underserved you know uh, yeah rural jordan sort of um My God, we did that and um so in these clinics you do these you know life skill tr- uh, we use football as as our, our our key to sort of you know teach them about life skills and leadership mm-hmm. and you know everyday yeah. things um we did that and then we ended up at the dead sea um the jordan side of it and um uh the prince his highness he had a, a football field ready for us you know he got a turf made um and um so we inaugurated it we played the world's lowest match for the football <laughs> match there and um there's a funny story to it because i scored with my hand and it was counted <laughs> oh <laughs> um, maradona <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and of th- the hand of God is on. Oh, I like the nice one. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Two days before I take that, no credit, I kind yeah. of like, um, I, so we played, uh, so it was an absolutely incredible trip for me. Like people from all across the world, any, any country, you name it. And, you know, we were there with a couple of us, uh, about 30 players, 30 of us all together. And, um, we trekked and we were living together and you know we had camps going on and we also got to play at these unesco sites where you're not allowed to even like go close yeah um, <laughs> there's the seven uh seven pillars of wisdom uh in jordan and we were playing a football match there with seven natural pillars Whoa. in the back right that's where i kind of busted my toe oh. uh, where i kicked a rock instead of a ball because that's what we were playing on. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and two uh, days later, I had the world record match, and I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to use my hand. <laughs> 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 At that point, when the ball was crossed to me, I was like, I'm just going to go all in. So it was actually like really close to my head. It's just, I don't know where my hand <laughs> was. Okay, like, right. if, if I didn't have my hand, it probably hit my head. But like, wow, that happened. But we played, and uh, it was incredible, you know. And I keep saying that, there might be more world records but why i do them or why i play them or why i bring them home is um what really matters to me um is because being able to do the sort of you know partially i don't know partially is the correct word things that are not normal things that are out of the box things that yeah men don't or cannot do either yeah you know when women do it yeah. uh, we're breaking world records we're setting them up and um it is all for all the girls from all across the world yeah. to have that, um, you know, opportunity to just come out and play. 
play a sport, play a football, um, you know, be able to have that avenue for everybody. And um, I, this is what matters to me and why I keep going back is, uh, yeah, it looks good on the CV, but yeah. it doesn't really matter if I don't really believe in what my what 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 I really stand for. Um, and uh, there will be more and I hope there will be. That's incredible. I mean, also you're representing Pakistan as well. That's good at that point. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. like you're, that's the thing. you're raising the green and white yeah. flag. Always, always, always. That's number one. It's always in my backpack. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, I, I remember because on the last day you actually you shot at me like Umar, and you're like Take <laughs> you just had the flag ready, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like yes. yes. <laughs> and I was like okay, we're done. <laughs> and then she just went off and played the match. I was like that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I no, it's that. just I don't know. You know, it's just it's different when you're step when you're on the field in another country, especially. Yeah. And your national anthem is going on. Oh wow. If you're not teary eyed, if you don't have a lump in your throat, you're not a true sportsman. I mean. Yeah. Oh, it breaks me. I mean, with so much gratitude and so much like, you know, I just want to be there for for the country and represent and, you know, yeah. not let anybody down. I think that's incredible because if, if I'm being completely honest, right, I don't know why you still do it. Like, I, I get it and I respect it mm -hmm. and I admire it and I look up to it. But like what you've given to this country compared to what this country has given to you i know you probably won't ever say this so i'll <laughs> say it for you it's asymmetrical it's unfair yeah. and i wish there was some kind of accountability to this unfortunately all i can do is just talk about it in my basement like you know what i mean yeah, i wish I there was that. something more i mean but that's still like you know anything any any support counts yeah so you know if right now is the time to speak about it i mean um i will be out there as much as i can you know um not forgetting that I will always be with the right people, yeah. the right yeah. kind. So if you're somebody who's trying to play me, don't try. <laughs> I know you, and uh, I'm not on your team. Yeah. So See, that's uh, a real gangster. Don't call me a gangster. I was afraid to say I'm that. Like, <laughs> just like clock me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that's gangster, and I love that. No, but still, you know, it, it's what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Do it for the right, or don't do it. Do nothing mm -hmm. half-assedly. That's my motto. It's just like you want to do something, go full ass, or don't go at all. Anything, just go full. I Otherwise, there's that. no point. I love How that. do you sleep at night then, you know? Yeah. Also, you're challenging two aspects, one from the women's side as yeah. well. You also talk about mental health, which is something that's very yeah. stigmatized here. Yeah. yeah. Like, sports psychologists yeah. is about dur ki baat hai. Yeah. Yeah. A psychologist yeah. itself is hard enough to, yeah. like, be yeah. okay with to get as well. So and that's... Yeah, that's the thing. And uh, sports psychologists, kitne hai? I have no idea. That's your next test. <laughs> <laughs> next <laughs> one, episode two of On The Mic, we have... I need we statistics. We have <laughs> stats on... <laughs> There's none. Sports psychologists. There's none? None, zero? Um, practicing Zero, British Asian Trust is an organization, is a foundation that I am also ambassador for. Um, it's a foundation by Prince Charles, but they have mental health programs in Pakistan. So okay. they partnered up with the Pakistan Cricket Board and they had one for the men's team and the women's team, um, wow. which is absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. And it really took somebody from the outside to come in. Um, but, you know, um, it's a start. Yeah. yeah. It really is a start, you know. Um, we have started talking about it. Why I talk about it is because it needs to be spoken about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why I've done TED Talks about it. Why I s just openly, you know, it's difficult, you know, being vulnerable in such a, like where, you know, you have so many eyes on you, where you have a lot of expectations from uh, so many kinds of people. It's just, um, this is the reality. This is the truth. This yeah. is who I am. Yeah. Um, this is what I bring to the table. You want to play, you don't. Ashwa group thinks they want to, but I don't. Yeah. So it's just... <laughs> I love that. That sigh was just like he just went like. <laughs> that was just everything. That and was, I was like, like a proper Snoop Dogg Dog kind of sigh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I would tone it down now, guys. No, I, I, this is what I was waiting for. Like you're like a fuck. I don't play it. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Yo, you've seen the teasers we make, right? That's going in there. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, during a podcast, okay, that's going in the teaser. Like, <laughs> that's going. In the, that's going. In. We're having the dramatic yeah. music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, yar, kya matlab? Matlab itna log dekh rahe hain. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been in the industry. I've been playing actively for so long. I have nothing to hide. Yeah. Um, but if I can use my voice, to voice, um, you know matters that are stereotypical or 
uh, you know, taboos or absolute myths in this country, why not? Yeah. Why not call them out? Why not speak about it? It's from my experience. Yeah. Right now, I, I, I will bring in again something else also that's very stereotypical is that um, I'm also a, mental, uh, a menstrual health champion for UNICEF. Every country Word. has one. Yeah. And um, so what we do with that is, and why I'm involved is that setting an example of being an athlete, there's so many taboos and there's yeah. so many, um, you know, myths that you, you know, you talk to these girls from underserved communities and they come up with what they thought it was and it blows my mind, you know, it's yeah. just, you know, so what my goal has become like to use football as a platform. I've said this out and out and I'm not, I'm not like afraid or shy away from it. Yeah. I use football now because I'm at a point where I can. Yeah. <laughs> football as a platform to talk about these sensitive topics, yeah. which are not liked by a lot of people yeah but this is the truth yeah you know if we're if we want to progress as a nation we have to face it yeah and we need to be able to do something about it and um it's just um i'm grateful for what football has given me i'm not sure if i would say the same about pakistani football yeah but um i wouldn't want to be selfish either yeah yeah and you know like th there's just a severe lack of education when it comes to something as basic as menstrual health but of course. it goes up till something like mental health and it goes up till basic you know understanding of how sports and the sports industry works people don't realize there's a lot of uh there is a lot of money to be made mm -hmm. with sports but it's not supposed to be concentrated in the hands of like three yeah. or four people it's supposed to be spread out and and, and there can be enough for everybody I, there I is like enough for everybody. Yeah, everywhere in the world yeah. exactly uh and hadra i just want to say like this has been absolutely absolutely such pleasure because because you champion these causes and you know like it's it's just inspirational for us to you know a fangirl over you when you're you know <laughs> doing your doing your thing and we're sitting here going oh where are your post go like <laughs> and we're going to sit there we're like wow she's so cool man <laughs> like, you know, no for real and then for oh, you, you guys. To, and for, to have you here yeah. it's it's an absolute I, honor and, so and I'd also, thank, thank yeah so like also like the point of like both of us are not football fans so yeah, we'll be very upfront but about we're fans of you <laughs> but, but, but like I, because like the first oh. match i told you before starting that the first match i ever yeah. watched of football was box and women's team against model town that was the sweetest right yeah so like that's the first time watching and like my first echelon like push into this uh -huh. sport was that uh -huh. and since then i've been falling in love with the sport yeah, and this, i've only watched pakistan football i don't know I, uh, I also love the fact that you've mostly been watching pakistani women's football <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean like i love to add women's there <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just pakistani football yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh sorry i apologize yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i have to make captions so that's separate. <laughs> oh so it's you huh <laughs> yeah. You are the winner. yeah i apologize no you've done enough you're fine but no like no but honestly we'll that's that. that like you said like you, you don't want to call yourself a leader but you've pulled that out of us like, that's a leadership quality Thanks, guys. I really so thank it. you so much for that thank you so much hadra and uh we're we're running out of storage space so <laughs> yeah i mean like well, that thing okay. how I, much do we have do we have like a minute yeah i, go I, for it, I go was for just gonna it. say yeah. we're running this is your time out, but this is the last segment that we always do on the mic okay. uh yeah. and that is your segment take the floor say whatever you wish get off, get off whatever you wish to get off your chest the floor is yours okay. hadra take it away all right first of all you guys we're in the middle of a pandemic and it is our responsibility to keep ourselves safe our families safe um people around us all this country um it is all on us we're seeing what's happening in, in the neighborhood we're seeing uh different kinds of you know these uh variants of of the covid 19 mask up and stay at home um also kudos to all the doctors all the doctors come a couple of my friends those who are not my friends you guys uh on the front lines um hats off for real um also um since government has not been paying its doctors and yeah. it's been almost a year they've been working their butts off uh, during the pandemic they're truly taking the toll and i would really sort of you know if somebody's listening uh please pay these guys please respect their service they are also in the middle of a pandemic and they also need to eat food. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's a little couple of bits on what's going on right now. Other than that, on the mic, we have Hadra Khan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Thank you that's so amazing. Much. That was awesome. We're clipping the hell out of that as well. And the, <laughs> and the 15 other points. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hadra, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Thanks for having you. me, guys. And really ladies know. and gentlemen, this has been the episode. You know what to do. Like it, subscribe it, comment it. No, 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 no. Just do it please and support pakistani football use the hashtag save pakistani football or is it pakistan football so it's save pakistan football support pakistan football right. those are the two main zones we either one of those use okay. them voice your opinion out leave a comment below if you don't know what to say just say hi you know we just need comments in this yeah. comment section <laughs> and that's it 
Thank you for watching. This has been on the mic. This has been the debut of this man. I want to be in your frame as well. I love you, oh, Omar yeah. Fazi. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, yeah. And you too, Tala. <laughs> <laughs> Adra, thank you so thank much. You so much. Thanks guys for having me. No, this is awesome. It's all ours. And for me, always to you, three words. You know what they are. Keep it tight. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.